The Fujifilm X-E4 and X100V are two of the most coveted cameras of their time and for great reasons. They're both incredibly stylish, super compact, and share many of the same amazing internal features like image quality and video specs. But as someone who's used them both for extended periods of time and loves them each for different reasons, what's the case for recommending the X-E4 over the more popular, more premium X100V? Now you can't go wrong with either camera, but the main reason is that the X-E4 is infinitely more versatile for photo and video purposes. The X100V features a built-in 35 millimeter equivalent lens. The X-E4, however, is interchangeable, so you can make a kit out of it with any of Fuji's other options. Whether you wanna grab the 23 F2 and make it a cheaper X100V, or grab something like the illustrious 33 1.4, and make it an incredible portrait setup, you can choose whatever you want to choose. And what about if you don't love the 35 millimeter equivalent focal length? Some might say you could just grab the teleconversion lens and make it a 50 equivalent, but now you're getting into the $1,700 plus range. I think in that scenario, 50 millimeter lovers are selling themselves short as the 35 F2 or 35 1.4 on the XE4 would make an amazing compact 50 millimeter point and shoot option. By no means is the X100V not versatile, but since the X XC4 doesn't have limited lens options. I have to give it the nod for versatility. But this also extends into the realm of video. I started my channel doing all of my photography and talking head videos on an X100V. If you ever want to do handheld video with the X100V, you're about to be in for a hard time since there is no stabilization whatsoever for it. So unless you have the Pentasmin on deck, run and gun video is gonna be tough. Now the X-E4 doesn't feature built-in stabilization either, but various Fujifilm zoom lenses, such as the 16 to 80 F4 and the excellent 18 to 55, open up that opportunity for you while still being at a cheaper price than a new X100V if you get them used. The fact that one moment the X-E4 can go from an even more compact the next 100 v kit by virtue of the 27 2.8 to an incredible portrait or high quality street kit with the 33 1.4 to a very competitive video kit with the 18 to 55, this just can't be overlooked. So as we can see, when it comes to video, there's no competition whatsoever. But outside of that, with features such as the optical viewfinder and weather resistance, if you pay the extra 50-ish bucks for the feature, it does make the X100V the more premium body. But see, I've never owned a DSLR or used a true rangefinder, so I don't care about the OVF. And maybe you don't either, that's okay. Now lastly, there's a common quote in sports circles that serves these two cameras extremely well. The best ability is availability. Do you love the 35 millimeter focal length? I did and still do, so it was a joy to use. But eventually, even I wanted to try new lenses, and that's why I sold it. If there's any part of you that wants to use other Fuji primes, not focal lengths, Primes. No, you can get most of them, especially the F2s, for cheaper than the price of an X100V. Is there even a 1% chance you might do video? Consider strongly that the 18 to 55 can be found for dumb cheap. Has OIS built in, and coupled with the next E4, it'll make a strong, lightweight, hybrid kit. Also keep in mind, 18 millimeter on an APS-C sensor is a 28 millimeter equivalent, and you still get some solid light gathering with the 2.8 widest aperture. Now to address some common points before closing out, yes, the X100V does feature the more premium materials for its build. It feels amazing in the hand. I'm not convinced anymore that the X100V's built-in lens is better quality than the 23 F2. Some of the sharpest photos I've ever taken in my life were on both, and years later, I do not notice a difference between either of them. That whole myth started from people trying to close focus the 23F2 wide open. Like, why are you shooting macro wide open with a non-macro lens? Of course, it's not going to be sharp. So when you're using the 23F2 with common sense, you'll see that it's beyond excellent. And it's been one of my top five Fuji lenses ever since I used it. And lastly, qualities such as the leaf shutter and built-in ND are amazing additions to the X100V. But of course, those only matter based on your shooting style. I love both of these cameras. The X100V has a special place in my heart, bought it with my own money, and it helped me get this channel started when it came to my talking head video. And thanks to Fuji, I've been able to use a loaner copy of the XE4 with the 27 Mark I for quite some time now. And it's been an absolute joy. And after all of this usage, I can comfortably say that in real life, daily usage scenarios, they're nearly the same photography experience. It's up to you which one you're going to purchase. XE4 body only for 849 new 
or 1049 if you get the most compact Fuji kit possible with the 27 2.8 Mark II. That's an amazing offer. The X100 being $250 more, that difference could be a used lens, it could be filters, it could be groceries for the next couple of weeks, you name it. If you need or just want every single premium feature that the X100V provides and you love that 35 millimeter focal length, that camera has a special place in my heart, you'll have a blast with it. But if there is any room for other preferences or you wanna try other Fuji lenses down the line, or you might open up your genres of photography or even begin shooting video, the XC4 is the right pick. But regardless, you can't go wrong with either. They're both incredible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.